Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Chewy stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements to determine if it's a buy or a sell. Chewy is an online retailer of pet food and other pet related products. In 2017, Chewy was acquired by PetSmart for $3.35 billion, which was the largest ever acquisition of an e-commerce business at that time. The company completed its IPO in 2019, raising $1 billion. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company. Market cap $28.3 billion. They're trading at $68.71 a share, and they have 412 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company, you estimate the future free cash flows, and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And you can see they have negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the business. It's revenue minus expenses and they have negative net income every year. Their revenue looks really good. It grows from 900 million to 4.8 billion, a 500% growth. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is cost of revenue. These are the costs directly associated with generating those sales, and that was 3.7 billion. And this little blurb on the bottom was pulled from their annual report, and it mentions their cost of revenue increased 31% from 2019. The increase was mainly due to a 36% increase in orders shipped. The increase in cost of revenue was lower as a percent when you compare that to the increase in revenue. And the company mentions this was due to supply chain efficiencies and cost of reduction initiatives. The company had their highest gross profit in 2020, $1.1 billion, but their operating expenses are pretty high, $1.4 billion. So they have negative operating income every single year. And in the company's annual report, it does talk about the increase in operating expenses. It mentions an increase of $120 million in share-based compensation. This is a non-cash item. And there was also a $142 million increase in fulfillment costs. This is mainly to support the growth of the business. Their advertising and marketing expenses did increase $34 million, but it decreased as a percent of revenue to 8.8% when compared to 11% from last year. The company did report a negative $252 million loss in 2020, but it's a lot better than 2018 and a little better than 2019. This is the company's statement of cash flows. An operating cash flow is a better indicator of a company's health than net income. And as you can see, they had positive operating cash flow in 2020, 47 million. They did have negative in 2019 and 2018. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, which was negative 252 million, and then you add back the non-cash items from the income statement. They had 30 million of depreciation and amortization. They also had 135 million of stock-based compensation. This is when you pay employees with equity from the company. And there was also a $122 million increase in working capital. So this company used $261 million of current liabilities. When you use the current liabilities, it's similar to taking a loan. You're buying on credit. You're receiving product or service, but you're not actually paying for it. So this improves your cash flow. When you do eventually pay for the product or service, then cash flow goes out the door and it hurts your free cash flow. But in 2020, it improved their operating cash flow and free cash flow, 261 million. They did have 139 million of inventory and receivables. That was a cash outflow. So they lost 139 million in cash due to those two activities. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. So they had a small negative in 2020. The company doesn't use much debt to finance their business. They finance most of their business on capital stock. They received $75 million in 2016, $125 million in 2018, and $110 million in 2020. The $110 million in 2020 was from when the company IPO'd. Every time the company uses equity to finance their business, they're diluting you, the shareholder. Let's look at the capital structure. $200 million of debt, negative $400 million of equity. If a company has negative equity, that means the liabilities are greater than the assets. 
and their weighted average cost of capital is 9.19%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $15 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $11.4 billion. We divide that by 412 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of $28. They're trading at $69, so they're trading at a 149% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply, Wall Street is a little lower than me. They're at $25.48 a share. So you can see the stock price has been driven up since it IPO'd. So obviously investors aren't looking at what the company's doing financially. They're looking towards the future because this company hasn't turned a profit. But based on their revenue growth, they're going to turn a profit really soon and stop bringing in lots of free cash flow. The company has never paid a dividend and doesn't plan on paying a dividend in the future. If you invested $10,000 when this company IPO'd last year, you would almost have doubled your money. Americans spend about $100 billion a year on their pets. The pet industry is one of the most resilient industries to be in. During the recession from 2008 to 2010, consumer spending declined, but pet spending increased by 12%. In 2015, 7% of pet products were bought online. In 2019, that went up to 22%. 33% of the company's products came from three vendors. So there can be some risk if one of those vendors went out of business or stopped doing business with this company. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE is 14.5, the median is 14.8, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. The average price of sales is 5.8, the median is 2.2, price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 5.8, so they're at the average. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.3, price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They have negative equity, so they have negative price to book. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. They don't have any interest payments on their debt. We can't look at the ROE because they have negative net income and negative equity. The average current ratio is 1.9, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 0.6, so they cannot cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are 200 million of cash, 81 million of receivables, and 317 million of inventory. The best way to look at ratios to compare them with similar companies, I've done videos on Momo, JD, Alibaba, Amazon, eBay, and Etsy, all in the same industry as Chewy. And if Chewy has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. They're a little better in price of sales. They have a negative price to book. They're not doing well in current ratio. We can't look at the ROE. They're 100% debt because they have negative equity. They do have a big market cap, but it's still a lot smaller than the average. And they don't pay a dividend. Only eBay and Momo pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 149% premium. Their ratios look pretty bad. Their financials aren't so great, but their revenue is really strong. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.